a very fun time, but juicy. It's got like a little, oh, it's got a sharpener. Chef's kiss. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be doing a full face of my current favorites. And a lot of this makeup, not all of it, but a lot of it, is actually stuff that I've tested over the past few months on my channel and then ended up using on like a really regular basis. So I thought instead of just showing you my favorites, I would actually put them on my face because I've done these kind of videos before and you guys said that it's a lot more helpful that way. Although there are a couple of things where I've got like two favorites. Like for example, I've got two favorite foundations and I can't really put both of them. Well, I mean, I could. I'm gonna mix them. If you're not following my socials, I'm Soph on TikTok. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Soph on Instagram. I'm at Soph Does Life on TikTok and Twitter. And that is about it. Let's just jump into it. Oh my God, the first thing I wanna talk about is something that you guys recommended that I buy. Obviously I can't put this on my face because it's a makeup cleanser remover thing. This is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. This is actually one of the best makeup removing balms I have ever used. It is quite a small pot, so compared to like some of the other ones I've tried, because one of my absolute favorites is like the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. Also the Elemis one is really nice, but it's like 40 quid or something. This one is drugstore. I got this in Boots actually. They had it actually in the physical store. And how much do you actually get in here? You get 56.5 grams or two ounces. Let me just check how much you get in the Clinique one. I mean, the Clinique one is in milliliters and it's 125 milliliters. So you get about like double the product in the Clinique one, but the Clinique one's 28 pounds and this e.l.f. one is a tenner. So you're definitely saving yourself some money there. I personally have really sensitive skin. I don't find it irritating at all. And it literally literally just melts your makeup off so easily because some of the cleansing balms I've tried can leave like a weird like waxy feeling on your face and when you add water it doesn't quite mix very well and it's hard to get it off whereas this just put it all over your face rub it all in then you add water and then use like a flannel or like a reusable cotton pad or something and wipe off like especially around your eyes and you can just wash it off your face and then go in with another cleanser to double cleanse it's just so good oh, I clearly dropped it it's just so good I think this one was actually in my yearly favorites so I'm not going to talk about this for too long but it is the Illamasqua Hydro Veil. I'm still absolutely loving it. I'm kind of alternating between like my Milk Hydro Grip and this one. It does come with a little spoon but I just use the back of my fingernail. It's like a jelly, proper jelly and it's quite actually hard to put on because sometimes it flops off and just falls onto the floor but you don't really need that much. Like this is more than enough, just like one back of a fingernail load. It is just so hydrating and it leaves my skin feeling sticky. So it gives quite a good grip for your foundation, which I really like. As much as I've talked about them, the, they're the perfect kind of primer if you've got oily skin, but also have some dry patches because you get the hydration, but then you also get the stickiness. So like it's gonna help it stay on. And then, oh my God, foundation. It has got to be these two. Um, the first one is the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Foundation, the Stay Naked Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. It's literally got the longest name ever, but this is in the shade 30 Light. And as you can see, I've actually nearly used this up. I've brought this with me like any time I've gone anywhere where I need to do my makeup, like if I'm doing my makeup in a car or like if we've been traveling somewhere, I've been bringing this with me. One, because it's in a squeezy tube, so it's really easy to sort of like travel with. It's very lightweight but secondly because I just love it I have actually really enjoyed this foundation since my skin has changed and like I've had dry patches and stuff and oh my god yeah look I'm having to sort of squeeze really squeeze it in half and just for full disclosure I think it was it must have been about a year ago now I did actually do an ad with Urban Decay on this foundation I think it was just an Instagram stories ad I don't think I've worked with them since <laughs> not for any particular reason I just absolutely love it it's so hydrating and it makes your skin look so smooth so if you do have dry skin, I would really recommend it. And then the second foundation, which I'm also going to put some of on, some on of, some on, <laughs> is the Rare Beauty Foundation. When I first tried this, I liked it, but I wasn't blown away by it. But I've just found myself reaching for this whenever I just want a foundation that's so quick and easy to put on because you just go like dab, 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 blend it out, you're good. You only need a little bit. And to be honest, I've actually probably got enough foundation on already, but... I am gonna put a little bit of this on because I've never tried mixing. Definitely give it a good shake. What I really like about this one is it feels really light on your skin. That one is a little bit more matte than the Urban Decay. So I'll be interested to see the finish of these both mixed together. Cause the Urban Decay one is definitely very glowy. And I think if you do have very oily skin, you probably won't like 
the Urban Decay one that much, but because mine is now sort of mixed these days, I just really like it. And as long as I touch up with powder, about halfway through the day and use a good setting spray. I find that it lasts really well without sort of breaking up around my nose or around my mouth or anything. God, I've now probably got way too much foundation on. But yeah, I really like the Rare Beauty foundation. But again, I think with that one, it might not be one that people with dry skin would love because it's not super hydrating. It's sort of like in the middle. But actually, I did see somebody comment on my Rare Beauty video saying that they really like it as long as they use a really hydrating primer underneath. So yeah, too much makeup on, but like look how glowing my skin looks. But as you can see, I will definitely need to set this with some powder, which obviously I will do in a minute, but I really love both of those foundations. I have also got two favorite concealers, the Rare Beauty Concealer. In the Rare Beauty Concealer, I got 170W, which is a little bit light, but it's really good for brightening my under eyes. And then, oh my goodness, this concealer, the KVD Good Apple Concealer. I only tried this a few videos back, but I absolutely love it. Um, I actually wore this on my birthday brunch which was a terrible idea. It ended really badly, guys. I ended up having far too much to drink, not enough to eat because I didn't particularly like the food and it was not a very fun time. But I wore this concealer and it lasted so well. So what I'm gonna do is put a little dot of the KVD concealer just there. This one is extremely full coverage. And then I'm gonna take the Rare concealer. I love the doe foot on this because it's sort of angled it just fits under your eyes so nicely and then let's put a bit of the rare concealer here and then i'll use this to be honest i don't really need much extra coverage on my blemishes because those foundations have covered them so well and i didn't really have many to start off with the kvd concealer i've got in the shade light 109 the kvd one is quite a matte concealer but you just need like the tiniest little amount of it because it spreads so far I would say that the rare one isn't quite as good coverage, but it still has really good coverage and it's not quite as matte, but I just really like both of them. I haven't been wearing my Too Faced one every single day because I've been reaching for these two, which is saying something. Just a warning, there's quite a few rare beauty products in here. They're just such good concealers. I would say go for the KVD if you're wanting a full, full coverage, and you don't mind your concealer being a little bit more on the matte side. It's not like a full dry down matte, but it definitely is a little bit more matte. The Rare Beauty one I feel like spreads a little bit better. It's not quite as like extreme full coverage. And I prefer the doe foot of the Rare Beauty one actually. And it's a little bit more hydrating, but they're both really nice. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about, when I first tried this in a video a few weeks back, I wasn't sure what my thoughts were on it. I was like, yeah, like I quite like it. Like it's pretty good. I would use it again, but it's not my absolute favorite. But this has turned into one of my favorites. This is the Be Perfect Shape Stick in the shade Caramel. They do do a few, quite a few different shades of this, I think. The packaging is a bit odd. Like it's a bit of a weird shape. I don't know. I find the bottom of it is just a bit awkward to hold, but with it being a it's actually really good for getting down the sides of your nose, but I really like this contour stick. It blends really easily. It's a really nice shade, this one in particular, um, for me anyway. But yeah, look, you can sort of use the edges of it to go down the sides of your nose. And then I just put some on the end of my nose as well. It just blends really nicely. And I think it's around 12 or 13 pounds, so it's not too expensive. You know what though? I'm dying to test the Primark contour stick because I know that it's supposed to be really good. But every time I go into Primark, it's just not there. But I think I did see Jordan, Jordan Lipscomb, say that it's supposed to be coming back into stock soon hopefully i think she said it was this week but yeah can you see it just blends so easily although <laughs> i think because i had so much foundation left on my brush it sort of blended it in a bit too much also both of these brushes that i use for nose contour this one is the blank canvas cosmetics f12 brush which is like a little mini i don't even know like angled brush i guess this is really good for concealer under your eyes or nose contour and then this one is the iconic london oh, it doesn't have a name it comes in like one of the iconic london brush sets i've had this for years actually but again it's like a really nice nose contour brush because it's quite dense if you're wanting to do cream contour that is not powder they're just really good brushes and oh my god i feel like i need to give a shout out to the sponge obviously I, i've used these sponges for quite a while now it's the coco cosmetics by chloe marshmallow sponge and i've mentioned this quite a lot of times on my channel but the reason i'm mentioning it now is because obviously it's a favorite but um she's just launched on beauty bay which is absolutely insane she's absolutely killing it because she started out as just a small business and now her sponges are on beauty bay which is amazing so they're a little bit easier to sort of get hold of liquid 
blush. Any guesses what I'm gonna say? And it's not the Made by Mitchell one. Rare Beauty. The Rare Beauty liquid blush in the shade Joy. This is the little mini one, but I actually think this is gonna last a while because you need two dots of this. It's just so good. And I also wanna give an honorable mention to the Revolution Super Dewy Liquid Blushes. These are also so nice. These were what you guys recommended to me and I absolutely love them. The only thing is, I feel like these two shades, if you were to mix these together, it would make this shade. Because what I was gonna say, I wish there was a shade that was sort of between these two. Obviously you can mix them, but does this not look like if you were to mix these two together? But have a little look on my channel because I used both of these in a video, like a few videos back. It was probably like a month ago now actually. Time goes so fast, but I'm gonna use my Rare Beauty one today. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, actually, I'm definitely gonna want some more blush. It's not quite two dots. With, I've got another shade of this as well, which I think is the shade Love. With that shade, I literally need one dot because it's so pigmented and it's quite a dark color. But I just prefer the shade of this one. It is just so beautiful. It blends so seamlessly into the rest of your makeup. It doesn't remove the makeup underneath. It's just the perfect liquid cream blush. And this shade in particular, I absolutely love this base makeup though is just so good like if i had to go anywhere i would be so comfortable wearing this makeup because i just know that it's gonna do me well you know and my skin is gonna look juicy i say it's gonna look juicy i then set it with a shitload of powder but that is how i get it to last so in terms of loose powder and setting powder in general i don't necessarily have a new favorite where i'm like oh my god but one that i have tried recently but i haven't tried it enough to say that it's like a firm like favorite favorite it's the 17 powder that i used in i think it was the last video that i posted because i only have used this a couple of times i can't say whether it's like a you know like a mega favorite but i'm just going to use it in today's video because you know it's something a bit different other than the laura mercier i never ever used to do this but i've been quite enjoying taking like a little bit of powder not too much but just like using my sponge to push it into my under eyes not baking but just like taking a very small amount of powder and just pushing it in because it just looks so smooth and then i am um, just gonna use it to set the rest of my face i had a few comments on a recent video being like why do you use all these beautiful glowy products and then set your entire face with powder and the reason is because if i didn't do that yes it may look beautiful and glowy now but in an hour's time it's gonna start probably like separating and it will look like too oily so i went into a kiko store the other day because i love all of kiko's like limited collections and stuff but i hadn't actually tried that much from their main collection like their core products so i got one of the bronzers which is the flawless fusion powder bronzer and i got the shade zero two they did have i think there were six shades of this a lot of the shades look quite similar so kiko if you're watching this i absolutely love you you need more shades in your bronzers because with the blushes they've got so many shades that would work on all skin tones but with the bronzers they only seem to have like light to medium bronzers but i got this one it's not quite as good as the marble bronzers that i love from kiko but it is a really nice bronzer it is matte but it's got the tiniest bit of not like sheen but it's just not like you know sometimes with matte bronzers they can kind of like suck the life out of your skin a little bit this one's not like that and it's a really really nice color it's not like crazily pigmented to the point where it goes on looking patchy it just adds a really nice bit of warmth to my skin and then i'm just taking this little makeup by mario morphe brush not makeup by mario wrong makeup artist makeup by ariel makeup brush to contour my nose again and then a blush i think this blush is like a few pounds these were so affordable and they had so many different shades so i went for this one which is the smart color blush in the shade 05 and this kind of color is right up my street it is a matte blush but again it's got like the tiniest bit of like not shimmer at all but just i guess maybe like some reflective kind of pearls that make it not like dry chalky matte it is really pigmented so you definitely got to tap off your brush but it's a really really pretty color and yeah i think these particular blushes they had lots of different shades of them i think they were under a fiver each so those are both really nice and i'm happy that i got them so for my eyebrows i've got a few different products i've got the rare beauty brow harmony thing in cool brown which is a pencil on one side and then the brow gel on the other side one thing i will say about this is the pencil is quite thick but if you're wanting to do a very quick eyebrow i actually brought this one with me to iceland and what i would do is i'd put on my refi 
brow gel and then just go over the top of it once my brows had sort of set with the pencil to just fill in any gaps. You can't necessarily get like super skinny strokes with this, but if you're wanting like a quick eyebrow product because it's quite soft, it just goes on really quickly. And the reason I like this so much is because I really like the color of it. I think it matches my natural eyebrows quite well. My natural eyebrows, as if these aren't tinted. And then it does have the brow gel on the other side, which is like a tinted, tinted brow gel, which I do like. But if you're wanting like a quick eyebrow look, this is actually a really nice product. I like the formula of the brow pencil, but I do also just wanna mention these two because this is the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat and I've got the shade Natural Brown. I love the formula of this pencil. I also really love the color. And the third thing that makes me love this even more, it's actually refillable. So you can twist out this bit and then you just keep like the nice looking Charlotte Tilbury packaging and you can just buy a little refill so it's a lot less waste and it makes it cheaper that way because it's not like paying for a full price brow pencil including packaging. And I think that that idea is really cool. So all props to Charlotte Tilbury for having some more refillable products. And yeah, I love how skinny this pencil is. I really like the formula of it. It's quite, oh my God, what have I done to this eyebrow? This mirror is so like covered in fingerprints that I actually can't really see in it. <laughs> Let me just get another mirror because I've turned this eyebrow into a slug unintentionally. Oh my God, I'm so glad I just got another mirror because what the hell have I done to my eyebrow? <laughs> Oh my god, that eyebrow needs some help. Um, and then this, which again, I used in my previous video, is the 17 Precise Definition Tinted Gel in the shade Brown. It's a really good brow gel, and I've actually used this every day since I filmed that video. If you just want a little bit of extra tint to your eyebrows, what is going on here? Okay, let me just get rid of the tails of both eyebrows because I've severely messed them up. I will fix that in a second. It's a nice brow gel. I think it's very affordable. I do have other brow gels that I do prefer. I mean, it's definitely been doing the job because I've been reaching for this over the past like week. And especially if I'm just running out the door and I want a little bit of tint to my eyebrows. The only downside to this is it doesn't have particularly good hold, but then usually I will use like a clear brow gel and a tinted one anyway. So if I do just want something that gives a little bit of color, I actually really like this. It does what it says on the tin, you know? Okay, right, let's give myself some eyebrow tails that are a bit smaller. How did I forget to do my highlighter before I did my eyebrows? I have tried many, far too many highlighters in my life. And this is one of maybe the best ones I've tried. Definitely in the past year, this is one of the best highlighters that I have tried. And it is the Nabla, 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 Nabla Skin Glazing in Ozone. And this is the highlighter that I tested for the first time in my testing your guys' favorites. And I absolutely love it. It makes your skin look wet. And I haven't been able to put it down since. It's just so good. Before I do my mascara, setting spray. I have three. Is that excessive? Okay, the first one is the e.l.f. Stay All Night Micro Fine Setting Mist. This stuff is so good and the mister, so nice. I think I used this in my testing e.l.f. makeup video. It really locks in your makeup. I did the setting spray test on this where I put a swatch of eyeshadow on my arm and then spray it with this and dry it and rubbed it and literally does not budge. You know what? Let's do it now. Let's just do it now because I want to prove to you all of these three, such good lasting power. So the e.l.f. one is the first one. The second one that I'm absolutely in love with is the Nimya setting spray, the set it and forget it setting spray. Out of all of the Nimya products, this one is my favorite. And you know what guys? I absolutely loved the primers. However, I think they irritated my skin, but this one does doesn't. Not only does it smell absolutely incredible, it keeps your makeup on so well. And I also have the little fan that it comes with, which is extremely handy. Only downside to this is the mist is quite strong. And the final setting spray is another Kiko one. And oh my goodness. Okay, this, it smells like hairspray. Okay, it smells very alcoholy alcoholy the lasting power of this and also it's like a continuous mister one why have i not seen anyone speak about this before i think i did a uh, test of the nimya one already i'm just using a bit of green eyeshadow taking the kiko one i'm just gonna do that but actually while i'm drying this one let me spray the elf one on the other arm <laughs> So what I will say, if you want something that's gonna make your makeup last all day and you want a bit of glow, go for the Nimmu one. If you want something that is very matte and you want it to last, or if you're gonna be wearing a mask, oh my goodness, the Kiko one. And if you want something kind of in between, that's not super matte, but not glowy, the e.l.f. one. They're all just so good. Oh no, 
I thought the fan would run out. I think it is running out of battery. No! Okay, I think that's dry though. Okay, so this is the elf one, right? Watch this. Sorry, not the elf one, the Kiko one. It was still a little bit damp. I'm gonna have to try again. I did it the other day with black eyeshadow and I swear it didn't budge. Okay, let me try it with this. I'm gonna have to try it again. But let's do the elf side. Can you see? I'm really rubbing it. It's just so good. But the one that I'm actually gonna use on my face is the Nimue one. Cause this one does add a bit of glow. So what I normally do is I will spray it all over and then I'll just reset my T-zone. But honestly, the lasting power is so good. It drenches your face. I wish the setting spray mist up was just a little bit less intense. Oh, it's got a couple seconds battery life left. I don't know if you can sort of see, it just brings like a little bit of healthiness back to my skin. I really like the way it makes my skin look and I absolutely love the smell of it. Moving on to my eyes, I've just got a couple of things I wanna mention. I don't have an eyeshadow palette, but I'm still obsessed with this Makeup by Mario Master Crystal Reflector. Everywhere I've been recently, I literally just take Take this, put it on my eyelid, put a bit of bronzer in my crease and do a liner and we're set. Cause it just gives the most beautiful sort of sparkly lids, like tiny little micro glitters, but it's just so pretty when it catches the light. Love it. Okay, wait guys, the, um, the Kiko one has dried. You see this one? Both of those, amazing, amazing. I've got three mascaras that I wanna talk about. The first one is the 17 mascara from my, my previous video, the Extreme Extension Lengthening Mascara. This is so good and it doesn't smudge and it's like four pounds. Another one is the Authored Mascara. I do have a video which I think was called like testing celebrity or influencer brands. This is actually Tanya Burr's brand. This one is more pricey. I think it's around like 20 pounds, but it's a really nice mascara. Again, it doesn't smudge on me. And what I really like about it is the packaging is actually recyclable and the brand itself is climate neutral but I did use that in that video and then my third favorite mascara is the rare beauty mascara I got the miniature version of this and again I tested this in my rare beauty video so what I am actually going to do is use the 17 one because I want to show you what it looks like without a really thick heavy makeup look because I was wearing a lot of makeup in the video that I tested this in. I just really like the brush of this. It's a thin sort of plastic brush with very short bristles. And I just really love how it grips my eyelashes and it is definitely very lengthening. So that is one coat. I do appreciate that for some people this might be a bit too clumpy, but I don't mind a little bit of clumpiness as long as it gives me good volume and good length. Obviously not like, I don't like it to be majorly clumpy. Like for a mascara that's less than a fiver, I think it's pretty impressive. For the lips, I've got three products. I've got the Authored Lip Balm. So again, from the same brand, Tiny Burr's brand. And again, the packaging is recyclable. I've just been grabbing this like whenever I've been sitting down to film a video to keep my lips moisturized so that they don't look super dry and crusty when I'm filming. And it is so moisturizing. It is a squeezy metal tube. So you just kind of have to squeeze out a little tiny bit and then put it on like that. Or you could use your finger to put it on. It feels like it's actually giving moisture which is what you kind of need. Although I did just put this on and then realize I've got to put on a lip liner and a tinted lip balm. So the final of my favorites in terms of face makeup are the Kiko Everlasting Color Precision Lip Liner in the shade 402. It's got like a little, oh, it's got a sharpener. But I was gonna say, it's got like this little like smudger thing on the end, but I'm not too sure if I would ever use that. But the actual lip liner is retractable and just watch, it is such a nice color. And it's so creamy, like, like, it literally just glides on. It's like a really nice, slightly brown toned nude color. I just love it. And then this, oh my goodness, the Bare Minerals Mineralist Lip Gloss Balm in the shade Ingenuity. I mentioned this in a recent video, I think. Actually, maybe it's in the video that I'm posting next week, but coming soon. It is just so beautiful. I also have another shade of this, but this one is my favorite. It smells a little bit sweet, not vanilla-y, almost like sweets, but it's just so hydrating and has that little tint of color in it. It just feels amazing. I absolutely love it because it does look glossy, but it's not like a stringy, gross lip gloss, and it actually feels like it's hydrating your lips. It is so nice. It's like a hybrid between a tinted lip balm and a gloss. Chef's kiss. 
This is kind of like my everyday makeup routine, I guess, of some of my favorite like everyday products. The final thing that I just want to mention, kind of a random one, but I just wanted to mention this because when I was a teenager, I used to get spots on my shoulders, on my chest, on my back. Like it's very common. A lot of people get that. I still do get the occasional spot like on my shoulders, on my chest. And this is a body makeup, which I know for some people you're going to be like, oh, I cannot be bothered with body makeup. Like that is just such a faff. But it's by the brand S19 and it says Studio Lab super fit super fx body makeup they've got quite a lot of different shades of this i've got the shade three light medium but it is such a good to be honest, I feel like this would work really well on your face. You get such a big thing of it. You need like one blob. One when my fake tan has gone a bit patchy on my neck and I just want to make it look overall smooth and like it's not patchy. <laughs> then I've used this. And also I have quite a few scars on my shoulders and I'm often quite self-conscious of them if I am wearing like um, a strappy dress or something. So I just wanted to give this a mention if anyone else is sort of like self-conscious of scars or blemishes on your shoulders or your chest or I guess anywhere else you could use this on your legs like if you're wearing a top where you've just got your shoulders out or something you could just put a little bit of this on and as long as you get one that sort of matches your skin color you probably wouldn't need to bring it all the way down your arms just sort of like buff it out in the areas that you need it not that i'm saying that you have to cover if you do have like spots or whatever because it is normal but i just thought i would give it a mention and it's water resistant. I put this on my hands and I tried washing my hands, but where the water was hitting it on the back of my hands, it was just sort of like bouncing off. Right guys, I'm gonna go. Those were my current favorites. I hope this was helpful. I will leave everything links down below. Please let me know your current favorites because as always, I'm always open to trying new makeup. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in my next video. Bye.